This video is on percent shortcuts. Finding 10%. If we want to find out what 10% of 400 is, what can we do? Well, finding 10% of a number is easy. You just divide it into 10 pieces. It's 10 out of 100. So we've learned how to do that with our percent bar models. We took 100%, we divide it equally into 10 parts. Each part represents 10%. And we do the same thing for our whole amount. We took our 400, we divide it into the 10 parts equally, and each part received 40. So 10% of 400 equals 40. Okay, what about 10% of 700? Well, again, divide it by 10. Hopefully, you'll realize that when they both end in a zero, we can do a little shortcut by crossing out one zero from each and we get 70. So 10% of 700 is 70. What about 10% of 85? Well, let's divide. You can do it long division. 10 goes into 80, or 85 eight times, which is 80. Subtract, I have a remainder of five. But we've learned this year that we can add a decimal and a zero, and we can keep dividing until there is no more remainders. 10 goes into 50 five times. Now we have a zero remainder. Make sure you bring this decimal point straight up to your answer line. So 10% of 85 is 8 and 5 tenths. So take a look at your answers and compare them to the whole. Do you see a shortcut for finding 10% of a number? Let's see. We went from 400 to 40. What happened to our number? Ah, it got smaller by a place value, right? What about 700 to 70? The same thing. We lost a place value. What about 85 to 8 and 5 tenths? Again, the decimal moved over one place to the left. And that's your shortcut. To find 10% of a number, you move the decimal point one place to the left. So for 400, you don't see the decimal point, it's invisible, which means it really goes at the end of your number to the very right of the last digit. Move it one place to the left and you get 40. What about 700? There's your decimal, move it one place to the left and you get 70. Here's 85, there's your decimal, one place to the left and you get 8 and 5 tenths. So let's try some. What is 10% of 89? $89. Here is your decimal. Move it one place to the left, and you get, you get 8 and 9 tenths, but we are talking about money, so we need to write it in the dollars and cents format, so we need to go ahead and add a zero. So we get $8.90. 10% of $89 is $8.90. What is 5? 5%? 5% of 60? Whoa! We've learned 10%. How can we find 5%? Well, how do you go from 10% to 5%? Divide it by 2. Cut it in half. So you do the same thing. First, find 10% of $60. So do the little shortcut. Move the decimal point one place to the left. 10% equals $6. So to find 5%, we take our $6, we divide it by 2, and we get $3. Let's try this one. 5% of 25. Well, do the same thing. Find 10%. So I'm going to move that decimal point one place to the left. 10% equals 2 and 5 tenths. So to find 5%, I just divide that by 2. Think of it as money. If you had $2.50, and you split half of it with your friend, you divided it into two, how much money would each of you get? You would get $1.25, right? So 5% of 2 and 5 tenths is 1 and 25 hundredths. What is 40, 45% of 40? Whoa, crazy, right? Hmm, well, I can find 50% of 40, and that's $20, right? 
I can find 50% of 40, and then I can find 5%. Well, 10% is 4, so 5% would be 2. And subtract them, because 50 minus 5 is 45%. So I subtract the 2 from the 20, and I get $18. So 45% of $40 is $18. That's one way. Another way is you could find the 10%. And how many 10% would you need to make 45? You would need four of them. So I could do 10% four times, which would be four times $4, which is $16. And then to find my 5%, I would just divide the 4 by 2, and I would get $2, add them up, and I still get the same answer, $18. Interesting. Okay. Well, what about finding 1%? We want to know what is 1% of 400. Well, think about it. 1% is 1 compared to 100. It's 1 out of 100. So to find 1%, I would need to divide it by 100. If you're going to make a bar model, think of taking that bar model and dividing it into 100 equal pieces. Each piece would be 1%. And of course, I'm not going to draw it because that would take forever and I would need a much bigger piece of paper. But if each is 1%, then take the 400, divide it by 100, and each part, each 1%, would get 4. So 1% of 400 is 4. Let's try 1% of 700. Divide it by 100. This time, they both end in two zeros. So I cross out two zeros, and I get 7. So 1% of 700 is 7. What about 1% of 85? Well, divide it by 100. Let's do it the long division. 100 doesn't go into 85, so right off the bat, I'm going to add a decimal point and a zero. Let me go ahead and bring this up so I don't forget it. 100 goes into 858 times, which is 800. Subtract, I have a 50 remainder. I can continue to add a zeros. 100 goes into 505 times. Now I have a zero remainder. So 1% of 85 was or is 85 hundredths. So let's see if the same trick applies. To go from 400 to 4, what happened? We lost two, two place values this time, right? So we move the decimal point two places to the left. So here's your decimal point. Move it one place, two places, and it becomes 4. Let's try it with the 700. There's our invisible decimal. One place, two places to the left, it becomes 7. What about 85? Well. One place, two place, it becomes 85 hundredths. So that's the, the trick. To find 1% of a number, you move the decimal point two places to the left. So let's try some. What is 1% of $89? Well, move it two places to the left, and you get 89 hundredths. Since we are talking about money, we need to go ahead and put that dollar sign. 1% of $15.80, move it two places to the left, one, two, and you get 0 .1580. Okay, we are talking about money. Since we are talking about money, it needs to be in a dollar cent format, and the cents go to the hundreds place. So we're going to have to round this. Here's our hundreds place. So we need to look at the digit to the right of it, the eight, is the 8 going to make the 5 round up to a 6, or is it going to have it stay a 5? Well, remember when you're rounding, if the number to the right, if the digit to the right, is 5 or greater, then you round up to the next number. So that's what's going to happen here. So this would round up to 16 hundredths. We are talking money, so we need to have that dollar sign. So 1% of $15.80 is... 16 cents. What about finding 3%? 3% of 25. Well, 
how, if we know 1%, how can we get 3%? Multiply it by 3, right? So first, find 1%. Here's my decimal. Move it two places to the left. So 1% is 25 hundredths. So 3% would be 3 times 25 hundredths, which equals 75 hundredths. What about finding 17% of 40? Well, what can we do? Several different ways. You could find 1% and multiply that by 17. You could find 10%, break it down. You could find 10%. Then you would just need 7 more percent. We can break that down to 5% and 2%. You could do that. Okay, let's see. I'm going to just go with the first. So $40, 1%, decimal point, we've got one, two places. So 1% is going to be 40 cents. Multiply that by 17, and what do you get? $6.80. dollars 80 Okay, so there are certain percent benchmarks that you should be able to do mentally in your head. And these are the benchmarks. You should be able to find 100%, of course, 50%, 25%, 10%, 5%, and 1%. Once you know these benchmarks, these amounts, you can use them in different combinations to come up with other percents, like 15%. So what is 15% of 80? Let's go ahead and take a look at our benchmarks. 100% is of course 80. 50 percent, well that's half of 80 which is 40. 25 percent, you could look at this two different ways. You could say, oh 25 percent is half of 50, so half of 40 is 20. Or you could say 25 percent, hey quarters, that's one-fourth, and divide 80 by 40, I'm sorry, 80 by 4, and you would get 20. Finding 10 percent, we do our mental math and we can move our decimal point one place to the left and we would get eight. Five percent is half of ten percent. So what's half of eight or what's eight divided by two? Four. And then to find one percent we move two places to the left and we would get eight tenths. So now that we have our benchmarks listed, let's go ahead and find fifteen percent. What combinations can we use to make 15%? Well, I think the easiest would be first to use the 10%, which is 8. And then to that, we add 5%. And the 5% is 4. So add them together. 10% plus 5% is 15%. And the 8 plus the 4 is 12. So 15% of 80 equals 12, or is 12. Let's try another one. What is 95% of 720? Okay, let's go through our benchmarks. We know that 100% is 720. 50% will be half of that, so divide it by 2, 360. 25%, you could either divide 720 by 4, or you could take half of the 50% amount, which is 180. 10%, use a little trick, move the decimal one place to the left and we get 72. 5% would be half of the 10%, half of the 72, 36. And 1%, move the decimal two places to the left and you would get 7 and 2 tenths. Okay, now we want to find 95%. So what combinations of our benchmark percents will give us 95%? Well, you could do 50% plus 4 10%, and that would give you 40, so 15, 40 is 90, and then add a 5%, you could do that. You could do 225, no, 3 25% and for 75, and 2 10%, that would make 95. Or you could do this. You could take your 100% and subtract the 5%.
because isn't 100 minus, minus 5, 95%? So let's do that. 100% is the 720, the 5% is 36, and subtract to find your 95%. So we have to borrow, 10 minus 6 is 4, borrow from here, this makes it 11 minus 3 is 8, this is a 6, check, 10, 11, 12, yep. So 95% of, of 720 equals 684. This is what you're going to be doing on your homework. Sometimes it's as easy as some questions are just finding 10% and 1%, so you just move that decimal point, put down your answer, and some of them you're going to be finding different percent amounts where you're going to have to use the benchmark percents to help you find those amounts. But before you get to that, you need to go ahead and complete the video check. You're going to work these questions on your video checklist that will be turned in at the end of the week. Number one, what is 55% of 360? Number two, 85% of 620? And number three, 22% of $860. Uh, again, there's no right or wrong way. Well, there's a wrong way, but there's more than one right way of coming up with 55%. So we want to see the way you come up with 55%. So just like we broke it down on the previous examples, you need to break it down as well on your checklist.